some of you may remember a couple of weeks ago I showed you this empty garden where people's been fly tipping but the surprise came a few days later I can't remember if I showed you somebody come along Hi everyone, well, it's another miserable, stinking wet day in Gateshead. It's rained all night, it's forecast to rain all day, forecast to rain all day tomorrow. So, I thought I'll nip the Asda, get some odds and ends, and while I was there, I seen some potato feed and it was cheap so I rang me plot neighbour Ian to see if he wanted any and he says he already had some I says oh well not a problem not a problem I just thought maybe you would would have been so cheap I says are you going to do the garden the day because obviously it's soaked and wet and raining and he says yeah I probably will late on this afternoon so I'm walking along going for a bottle of milk and a loaf of bread when I just see somebody come to the waters I says why didn't you say you want us that he says oh she's just going to find you and sneak up behind you and just grab you well that could give us a heart attack, you know. So we had a chat for a minute or two. And he had a couple of the boxes. So I just says, right, well, I'm going to finish my shopping. Um, then I'll probably either go straight home, empty my shopping, then go down the plot. Or I'll go down the plot first then go home and then I may call back down later on weather dependent obviously uh, yesterday it was really glorious day so I got some things done not a great deal but enough um, I finished my compost beers off got some more wood chip to finish off <coughs> in front of the compost base built myself a carrot box it's about four foot high I've just got to fill it with world used soil sand give it a good seven and in then it's just going to be all carrot only and I'm going to build another one about two foot away from it which will be parsnips only obviously I've got the four posts for it but I haven't got the timber to actually make the frame for it yet <coughs> so I've done that the carrot, the carrot box um, fed the beds again and then turned it all in and then I gave each bed just a light spray with water down jazz fluid I like to do that if there's any little flies out like that it helps to chase them away so I've done that um, sowed some more seeds done plenty potting on um, I helped Ian with some compost speaking of compost I also bought some and it was only because uh, our secretary told us about it yesterday at the AGM the local shop the local garden garden nursery uh, South Dean 
he's got the clover pad blending and it was uh, I think it was 450 a bag 50 litre bags but you could buy three for a tenner so I ended up buying 12 bags for 40 quid and I thought well even though it's cheap it'll do just to top all my beds up again and as I say I bought 12 of them so I'm debating on whether to buy some more Ian bought some my plan today was to go and get some more wood chip because we haven't had a delivery now for a fortnight <coughs> but I found a nice little pile good wood chip and I could probably get maybe 15 maybe even 20 black bags which would do enough for what I need probably more than what I need to be fair so that was my plan I may not go today because obviously it's raining all night it's raining now the time you stand fill in the bags you're gonna get soaking plus the bags are gonna be heavy with only probably half the amount of wood chip in because it'll, it'll have absorbed all the water so I think that's a, a non-starter today so I've decided I'm gonna go home now put the shop in the way go back down the plot well put the shop in the way let Bryn out go back down the plot and I'll probably stay there for a good few hours and I'll show you me putting on um, I'll tell you exactly what I've sewed because off the top of your head I can't remember everything uh, you can see the carrot box and stuff like that and I'll be dying to get the fire on it's never been on for about five days now so it'll be nice to get the fire on get some heat in and get a nice hot chocolate so I'll catch us all very very soon some of you may remember a couple of weeks ago I showed you this empty garden where people's been fly tipping but the surprise came a few days later because I can't remember if I showed you somebody come along and it looks as though they've used a chainsaw and cut a gap out of the hedge and they've dumped a load of stones and stuff so we've picked the hedges back up what they cut put it in place and got some tin sheeting just to try and make it a bit more of a fence there's a the compost base finished nice little tidy corner store wood chip I still need rid of this there's another beer I need wood chip for here and for that corner and that's it I think that's the compost I got hot blend you can see six and six and the cosmos are all doing well <coughs> apart from the snowy spires and the nicotiana so we'll just see what happens we'll leave them a little while there's the carrot box so it needs filled but I'm going to put another box just to the side of it here which will be for the parsnips uh, I've got a few hoops given yesterday so I can either repair this little polytunnel and get a new cover or I can actually extend the polytunnel to make it bigger and then get a bigger cover so we'll see what happens there 
So the Swedes have been potted on. That's Tweed. That's the Marion. And yesterday I planted some Cape gooseberry seeds, or I sowed them, I should say. Only three. So I don't know what will happen, whether they'll germinate or not. Um, all year round collie. And then Savoy cabbage. I just potted them on because they were starting again just a bit leggy. So that got them done. Um, obviously, you have seen the onions and spring onions. Tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. Plenty, yeah. So it's crimson crush there. Then money maker. Then burlesque. And then we've got honeycomb. They are doing quite well. You know, they're not massive, but they're doing quite well. There's some more uh, Mariam Swede that I just potted on yesterday. And this is Sun King Broccoli. I just said sprout away there yesterday. And in the toilet rolls, there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 carrots and there's 14 parsnips which is part of me little trial i'm going to grow them in them in the boxes where they've been called as you've seen i'm going to grow some in pipes and then some in beds these i might put into beds outside unless i get the boxes finished and then i'll put them actually in the boxes just in drills um these, three beetroot, and then there's nine iceberg lettuce. Clap and collie. Then you've got tumbling tomatoes. And then you've got the dwarf tomatoes. Um, sweet peppers, which are about three weeks now. Uh, my tigerella tomatoes which weren't put in appearance are just starting to now and see there's three four five six seven eight of them cucumber and then i've got three sweet corn coming through um melons now that's a funny story Tracy, from Tracy's allotments and vlogs, I had told that I had sown the melons just over a week ago. Truth be told, I hadn't. I thought I had. The tree was there, as it is. Watered, everything. And when I was sowing seeds yesterday, I came across a packet. And lo and behold, it was me watermelon seeds. I had just... Put the compost in, put it in the tray, watered it. I hadn't put the seeds in, so that was a blooper. So the seeds went in yesterday. Um, these are the onions for our competition on this side. It's just a friendly competition, but these are me two onions. Uh, we'll see how the peas are getting on through here. Definitely time where these can be planted out if this weather would flip and change. I've still got note on the flowers that I sowed a few days ago. Nothing yet. Um, these, the Cavill and Wonder. I've actually put some 
that the marrow fat pees in with them. I'll let you have a look at these one. These will germinate and they'll come through. I'll read, you can see one's just starting to germinate there, if I can show you it. There. So, yeah, they'll be all right. Kettle's whistling, so I'm going to put the kettle on now. I'm saying I'm going to put the kettle on, sorry. I'm going to make a cup of drinking chocolate now. Well, I've shown you what I've been doing yesterday. The only thing I forgot to mention was um, I sowed some red sunflowers. I think that was the only thing I forgot to mention. Um, I think it, the majority of people who watch this channel probably also tuned in to Laura, the tiny garden on a live a few days ago. Um, I think that live went absolutely fantastic. I really do. Um, she's a natural behind the camera. She interacts with the audience or viewers. You know, she's always watching the chat to see if people are saying hello, if they're asking questions, whatever. So, Laura, if you're watching this, please do some more lives. That one was absolutely fantastic. Um, what else? What, there was something else I had wanted to say. Oh, Tracy. Tracy's allotment and vlogs. It was great to actually see you on camera in your video. More of that, please. The audience, in my opinion, will feel as though they know you better when they can actually see you. And as you said, you do the I forget I forget the name now, sorry, it's my memory again. The calls for work. You know, it's all video stuff. So, it's not as really a strange to it, you see. Maybe you just need your confidence building, but whilst you're on the camera in that video, it was great. So, more of that, please. And I'm wondering, should Carl start making videos on his own channel? worth thinking about isn't it it's uh, it's a shame for us northeast growers can't get stuck out and I have to shut this door second I know that Rachel and Eric Jamie, um, Tracy and Carl, they are wanting to get the potatoes out. The way this rain's heading, you're probably looking a good week and a half to a fortnight. That's my opinion. Um, my first earlies are in tubs. My second earlies will be going in tubs. My mains will be going outside, so I'm in no great hurry to get them out. Uh, I would love to be able to get my Swede out, uh, my cauliflower, my Savoy cabbage, etc. I would love to get them out because I'm going to have to try and make more space by building some sort of a contraption like a shelf over the top of what's there so I can put more on top because I've still got loads and loads to sew. Um, I need to cut me pipes. You know, just drain pipes. 
just going to cut them to size or grun the carrots and parsnips in. Uh, Ian next door, he done one black box yesterday and when he had completed that one, he come in here, he went, I'm not doing that anymore. I says, why? Oh, he says, it takes too long. He says, I'd rather go out, just put a drill in a bed and just put the seeds in. I says, fair enough. I says, not everyone likes. I says, that's why I'm doing in the box, in the tubes, in a bed, and I'm building the carrot box so I can do it next. I say, so I'll have like four opportunities to compare which is the better way of growing for me. You know, because as I've said previously, not everything that works for one person works for everyone. You know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. You know, that's an age old saying and it still rings true to this day. If something isn't broken, don't fix it. And there's a phone call coming through. Sorry. That was the end, just ring it to see it. If the rain's still on by two o'clock, half past two, he won't be coming down today. If it eases off, he will come down. So whether he does or he doesn't, I don't know. Um, I'm pretty much finished in here. So I think I'll give it maybe 10, 15 minutes. Then I'll go home. I'll see the brain, my loving, loving, lovable dog. <laughs> He's balmy. Eh, uh, I'll see to him. I may call back down later on. I don't know. I don't think I will. Um, I'll stoke the fire up because it's due to be really, really cool tonight. So I'll stoke the fire up, let some heat go through. Um, and just see what happens basically I can catch up on some more YouTube videos once I get home I think I'm pretty sure I got a notification before seeing Ali and Trisha from the right pair plot had uploaded the video um, I need to catch up on Danny's last one Tony C. Smith, I haven't watched Tony's yet, which he put up yesterday. Ali's, I haven't watched Ali's latest one yet. I'll be catching up on that today. Um, I'm subscribed to that many channels, um, which I think is great because it helps, it helps them build their channel, which is what it's all about, you know what I mean? It's great. As I said in a video last week, it's like a, a gardening community. It, there's never no nastiness and because it's a community, when you subscribe to the channel, even if you don't watch the channel at all, if you subscribe to this, it helps the channel to grow, you know. I'm subscribed to a few which I've only watched one or two videos. Um, but I still subscribed to the channel you know I, I love to help channels grow people help my channel grow from pretty much two subscribers to I think I'm on about 340 so people help me grow my channel so I in turn help other people you know even established channels you know, channels that's got thousands of viewers. I subscribe to them. But I also subscribe to new channels. Um, channels that make only have one or two subscribers. You know, every little helps a channel progress. And we're getting quite a lot of new channels. Lately, who are quite new to allotment and gardening in general. And I think that is great that more and more people... Or taking an interest so do what you can to help people we had our 
AGM yesterday. And we I think we've got 66 gardens. As well as me and Harry the secretary. We had Mick Turnup who's committee. Keith who's committee. Jackie who's on the committee. And Marion, she's on the committee. Apart from that, I think it might have been about 12 to 15 people turned up. And most of them paid their rent. Full garden, 84 quid plus £30 for the water. Now bear in mind, this water is only six months of the year. So 30 quid, yeah? And I forgot what was answer here. 30 quid, yeah, so 30 quid and 84 quid per rent is a total of 114 quid. Now, what I don't like, and I was actually outvoted by the committee, what they're doing, even the half gardens are paying 30 pound water, which to me is wrong. Two half gardens make a full garden, because when a full garden comes empty, we'll halve it. So the committee voted to charge each half £30 each. So in effect, a full garden has been 60 quid. And I can understand where the committee are coming from, working that out. Because obviously, if they split, or if they charge the garden, the water as a whole, and split it between them, then the price of water bill will go up, the payment. I think we've got 16 half gardens. So in effect, that's eight full gardens. So if you charge those eight full gardens 30 pounds, so that's 15 pounds per half, you've still got those, the deficit of the other ones to make up, which means that the price per garden would go up. But it would be negligible. It would be two and a half quid, three quid, you know, a six month. So to me, I argued the half gardens split them 15 quid each for the water. Yeah, but as I say, I was outvoted. So the half gardens, they pay 46 quid rent, they pay 30 quid water, 76 quid. That's for the year, the rent, but only six months for the water. Now, I think there's something wrong somewhere. Our water bill shouldn't be that. But it averages between 1,800 quid and 2,600 quid. Every bill. Every year. Yeah. But the water's only on six months. It's only supplying now 66 gardens. So if you take eight half gardens away, it's supplied 58 full gardens that's a lot of money over the, the space of six months because the amount of water we've had with rain over the last few months everybody's water barrels full so they're not using water even in the summer the barrels are full like our barrels are full now so we're going to turn the water on on the first of may which i argued again it's wrong. People have paid the water rate. They made the payment, put the water on. But once again, I was outvoted by the committee. But um, first of May, the water will go on. Then obviously we'll have to check every single garden to see if there's any leaks. If there's any leaks, we'll have to fix them. And that was the argument point with the people that were in attendance at the AGM uh, they weren't happy that we had asked them if they could all please be down on the first or if it wasn't the first it would be the first Sunday in May yeah so we asked could you all be down at your gardens only to turn your taps off and be there for when we turn the water on you can let one know if you've got a leak. Otherwise, some of the gardens, they've got five and six foot fences. 
we are going to have to climb over. And at my age, I'm a bit old. I'm a bit fat, heavy. Me joints aren't as supple as they are for climbing over. You know? So I didn't want to be doing that over. There's at least 30 gardens that are like that. A lot of them have got a privet, which is like five or six foot high. And I didn't want to be getting scratched a bit climbing over there just to check for water. But the majority of the people in attendance didn't want to come down. So I lost my temper, I did. I went, well, look, you saw all whinge on the water. Didn't come down, but didn't whinge when your water gets cut off. I says, because I will cut the pipe off and blank it. It's as simple as that. If you can't be bothered to come down and help us determine if your garden's got a leak or not, why should I waste my time fixing it? It's easier for me to cut your pipe, cap it off, job done. You're responsible then. That was met with a, a few, we'll say expletives, bad language. Hey, I'm not bothered. I'm not the chairman to make friends. I'm the chairman to look out for their interests. But I've also got to look out for the interests of other people and other committee members as well. Now, the majority of our committee, the, the age ranges from, I would say, late 40s up into the 70s. Why should we be having to claim over hedges? I personally don't think we should. And if people aren't willing to come down, yes, we can make exceptions for people who maybe work or people who are in ill health that can't come out the house, things like that. Yes, absolutely fine. We can actually go to them and get the key for that gate. There's no claim involved. We can let ourselves in, check if there's a leak, fix it, go out, lock the gate. We can return the keys to them. Yeah. But what do I know? Not a great deal apparently because I'm full of what you put on your beds. I won't swear. Um, but that was sort of the main topic, the water and the leaks. And the council have implemented a new rule. Um, one shed, one greenhouse, one polytunnel. And the con confusing thing is in the rules, they're saying you can only use um, reusable items, you know? But then, when it tells you about the shed, the greenhouse, the polytunnel, it tells you you can't use UPVC doors or windows. Well, does that not contradict what they're saying about using reusable things? You know what I mean? Uh, but some people thought that was the committee until we actually showed them the rules. We had three new people in attendance who had just signed our gardens yesterday morning. So there was a copy of rules available. So a lot of people were having a look and then, yes, they were quite happy to accept it was a council rule, not committees. Um, the other council rule which we did sort of decide not to go with. Every gardener who has a main tap coming from under the ground, a lot of people have branched off and run a pipe into their garden so they can have that one tap, yeah? The council have told me it needs to stop, we need to chop them off, right? Which means then the gardens are going to have to put a two-way splitter and you'll have to connect your hose. So, we're not going to follow that. Even though we've been told we should, or we'll have to, we're not going to. Any vacant gardens, if they have the pipe going into the garden, that will be cut off and capped. They will have to either use a splitter, or if they want to put that uh, extra pipe in again, they can, but they do it without the knowledge or permission from the committee. Therefore, they're in breach of the council's rules. Yeah? We are just saying, 
previous tenants, I'm saying previous, tenants now who have been here prior to the new rules. We won't apply the new rules to them. Well, obviously we will apply them to new tenants. Any vacant gardens, the rules apply. Uh, but all in all, it was it was quite good for how long it lasted. And then after that, it was a case of coming here and cracking on with what I was doing. So I think I've rambled more than enough. So as always, I've had a few more subscribers to those people. Thank you so much. Much appreciated to the subscribers who have been here over the few months. Thank you very much. Whether you watch all the video a little bit, you fast forward through it, whatever. Thank you very much. It is appreciated. Anyway, although it's miserable here in Gateshead, other way in the country it might be nice, so enjoy the rest of your bank holiday weekend you have left. Bye-bye, everyone.